So, just a quick lecture, we'll be talking about the formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm and the chorionic cavity. So, how is the extra embryonic mesoderm formed? Previously, we spoke about the intra embryonic mesoderm, where we said that uh, it's basically uh, the cavity. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Okay, intraembryonic mesoderm is different from intraembryonic cilium or cavity, all right? So we haven't made a video on intraembryonic mesoderm yet, all right? So let's talk about the formation of extraembryonic mesoderm and chorionic cavity. So this is our focus for today. We discuss the formation of extraembryonic mesoderm and the chorionic cavity. So um, extraembryonic cilium, all right, that's basically like the space there. The extra embryonic mesoderm is basically like yeah, this layer around the space there. So the formation of extra embryonic mesoderm now. Epiblast cells at the caudal portion of the embryonic disc proliferate and migrate into the space between the husas, okay, husas membrane or the amniotic membrane, okay, internally and the cytotrophoblast externally. Right, so this is basically I see like uh, epiblast cells are now migrating, okay, migrating to occupy the space, okay, between the husas membrane and the cytotrophoblast, okay. The type of trophoblast is the outermost, it's outermost, right, and the husas membrane is inside, all right. So the space in between. The space in between the Husserl's membrane and the cytotrophoblast will now be occupied by epiblast cells. All right. Now, this structure is now called the extra embryonic mesoderm or the primary mesoderm. Okay. So now, soon, larger cavities will develop in the extra embryonic mesoderm. Okay. So now, these cavities will coalesce to form the extra embryonic cilium or the chorionic cavity. Okay, so the coronary cavity is also called the extra embryonic cilium. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the parietal extra embryonic mesoderm, that's the inside one, and the uh, uh, visceral layer of the extra embryonic cilium is the outer, uh, okay, sorry, the parietal extra embryonic cilium is the inner one, and the visceral layer of extra embryonic cilium is the outermost one, all right? So this space in between them is actually what we call the extra embryonic cilium or the chorionic cavity. Okay. So now this cavity will surround the yolk sac and the amniotic cavity. All right. Remember we spoke on the chorionic cavity where we said it's a bigger balloon and it's having two smaller balloons inside it. Okay. So this whole larger surface here is a chorionic cavity. Okay, or coronic sac, and it's having the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac inside. All right, so it's surrounding the primary yolk sac and the amniotic cavity, except where the embryonic disc is connected to the trophoblast by the connecting stalk. Okay, so it is surrounding everywhere except this red side, okay, which is the connecting stalk. All right, then. With vascularization, the connecting stock becomes the umbilical cord. All right, so that's basically, how, guys, the formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm, extra embryonic cilium, or the chorionic cavity. Right, so see you guys in the next embryology lecture.